Hello and happy Friday. Um, I'm Suzanne and this is DM Dewitt Hall and we are your hosts for the Cookbook Love page. Yay! Yay. Round of applause. <laughs> So we've just started this new thing where we're coming to you live on Fridays, and mm -hmm. we're talking about the cookbook of the week. Cookbook. We're not oh, sure week. how this is all going to evolve, because we just started last week. But you want to um, share what it is, or introduce the cookbook Here this week? Here it is. It, we don't have the dust cover, sadly, but it is called Peg Bracken's Appendix to the I Hate to Cook Book. Um, <laughs> it's the second volume in um, what ends up becoming kind of a series, this mm. this uh, the first one was called the I Hate to Cook book, um, and then this is her second. Do you remember how we first heard about this cookbook? I don't. Tell me. I, remind me. A friend of ours, her name is Holly Robinson. Mm. She wrote a memoir called The Gerbil Farmer's oh, that's Daughter, right. I which remember is now. hilarious. And her mother hated to cook, um, <laughs> so she was describing these childhood stories because her dad was secretly raised gerbils in his garage. Um, hilarious book. But anyway, she mentioned um, that her mom used the cook, the first one, the I Hate to Cook book. Um, and so we found a copy and I loved it. And <laughs> the, I would have featured, we would have featured that book today, except I can't find my copy. Um, and so we're featuring this one. And it Show them all the tabs. So this fantastic. is what your cookbooks look like. Well, they're usually neater. So I've put these tabs in here specifically <laughs> to show you things. Usually I'm a little bit more neat. You'll see um, my more orderly tabs in another book. Um, but one of the great things about the series are the illustrations. Mm. And what did you find out about the illustrator? The illustrator is the same one that illustrated for Eloise. They worked together on this book and she did the illustrations. As a matter of fact, Pat Bracken was... Uh, Born and grew up in St. Louis and moved to California, and I believe she was born in like 1918, lived to almost 100. So these I forgot, I usually uh, will tell you what the year. What year was this one? This one is 1966. Okay. So the first one was probably a couple years before that, presumably. Um, as I said, the illustrations are fantastic. Look at that little cutie. <laughs> I'm just going to show you a couple things in here. Look at with that little dog. Let's see. Some of the recipes are interesting. On in this particular chapter on um, cooking alone, she has recipes for curried muffins and hmm. the milkshake. <laughs> Very official. The milkshake. <laughs> I'm gonna show you. Um, this one is about diet cooking um and it says so the all these chapter headings are written um strangely like this one's called fat comma some of my best friends are <laughs> and what the other ones do um so she's very clever a little sassy here in Did the dessert section there's a recipe called um six minute cheesecake so how well. could you not love that and then I just wanted to read you a little bit um, to give you a sense of the style because some mm. cookbooks are for kind of just browsing and looking at the recipes and some of them are really fun to read I like both styles yeah this one is a reader version She's entertaining. and there's another great illustration and I'm just gonna read you the opening to this so this chapter is chapter two it's called anticlimax uh, anticlimax comma the daily 50 entrees for the simple-minded and the pure of heart. Um, and she says, all days lead to the kitchen, or so it seems at 5 o'clock at night, and there is an astonishing number of days in the average lifetime. 30 uninspired but dependable recipes will see you through about three decades in the kitchen. But if you're going to be standing around out there, standing around out there for longer than that, you'll need another batch. <laughs> this chapter, it is hoped, will provide them. These recipes have all been reluctantly tested and somewhat more cheerfully approved by women who hate to cook. They call for no mysterious ingredients and measurements are as clearly stated as possible. No, add a wine glass of Chablis sort of thing. <laughs> and for those of you who have some of your um, 
grandmother's cookbooks, the really old ones, would have a lot of stuff of that. It'd be like um, walnut, a knob of butter the size of a walnut, which at yeah. least that one's pretty practical. But right. if it says a teacup or <laughs> a... Um, Depends on the teacup. A wine glass, right. <laughs> I mean, there's considerable variation there. Uh, let's see, I want to read a little bit more on this. Um, whether these recipes are completely free of landmines is, of course, another matter. The human element is involved here, and you know how that can complicate things. For example, a cookbook writer can say in her directions for clams shortbread, add the contents of a 7-ounce can of clams to some biscuit dough. Because she has made this little masterpiece so often herself, she doesn't think to say, drain the clams first. <laughs> <laughs> but we literal-minded recipe followers will simply do as we're told, ending up with a thick clam soup, which disorganizes us badly. So that's an example of some of the writing. She's very clever. She's very funny. I think did when you were checking into her, did it say, I think she may have written for some newspapers for a while as a humor columnist or something. Did you find that? I didn't see that, but I saw that, that she had several books, mm -hmm. and she had written in several Publications is what it said, so yeah. I would imagine that's what they're talking about. So she is hilarious. I'll be sent throughout the week. Um, we'll be sharing some of these recipes. It looks like someone is asking for the six-minute cheesecake recipe. Yes, I will do that. Mm. I will do that this evening at cocktail hour when I'm reading this lovely little little title. And um, we'll share some pictures and some other things about her. She's awesome. And uh, if you have a chance to get any of her cookbooks do so. Peg Bracken. And we'll share information about her and some memes and you'll share about the book all week because yep. it's going to be the cookbook of the week. So cookbook we'll have more week. about her and the books as the week unfolds. We need a little bit of audio that has one of those voices saying, the cookbook of the da, week. Da, da, da. Yeah. <laughs> like, like those monster truck voices or something. <laughs> but we're glad to be with you today and we hope you'll in enjoy um, little bits from Peg's and uh, in the comments, share if you're reading any fun cookbooks or have any good um, recommendations for goodies, oldies with goodies. Okay? <laughs> you take care. And we'll, we'll see you next week. See you next week. Bye-bye.